Yo, YouTube, what is up? Radar25 back in with my co-host, Funtomania, Michael. What up, Marks? Guys, it's another takeaway video. You know what time it is? It's a Wednesday Night Wars, AW versus NXT. It's going to be seven takeaways. Oof. Lucky number 7-Eleven. Seven takeaways um, for the Wednesday Night Wars, AEW, and NXT. We're going to start off with AEW first this week. Go into that one. we got three takeaways for AEW. Uh, before we get into the video, guys, I want to remind you, drop a like on this video. Previous videos have dropped. Um, also, if you're watching, that subscribe. Please subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you guys aren't missing anything that's dropping. Uh, follow the social medias, Twitter, Instagram, uh, my live streams, Twitch, Mixer, pop up on the screen. Uh, guys, but without further ado, let's jump right into the video. The seven takeaways from right, the Dally. Wednesday Night Wars, AEW versus NXT. We're starting with AEW first. That's let's not get All right, guys. So we're gonna start off with AEW. AEW started off with the Inner Circle arriving to the arena, Daily's Place Amphitheater, as they're normally doing all their shows at, in a limo, in style, classic NWO style. They came oh, out. Style. Yeah, they came out. Alex Marvez was there to greet them, and he walks up to Jericho and he <laughs> says, "You guys are rolling in style on a limo." And Jericho proceeds to tell Alex Marvez, "Shut your ass, Marvez." <laughs> And they start fucking with him a little bit, and uh, so good. Ortiz takes his tie clip, and that's how the show starts. Um, so hell, of a, hell of a start! Classic, classic um, uh, inner circle and classic here's Jericho. Shut right your there. ass! Yeah. So the first thing on the show, guys, and it's takeaway number one of seven for the Wednesday Night Wars is John Moxley versus Ten of the Dark Order. Uh, you know, the match was what it was. It was pretty much um, Moxley just dominating 10 the entire time. But we want to focus on what happened afterwards. Now, this is the go-home show for uh, Double or Nothing happening this Saturday. You'll get a, a recap video Saturday night for that as well. Um, but this happened. The match, obviously, Moxley gets the win over 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, trying to find out who 10 actually is. Uh, mm-hmm. we'll let you know in the Mystery comments section if you guys know who 10 is, what wrestler he actually is, where he's from. I've seen him, but I mean, if you've seen him before, I kind of like the fact that we don't know him. That is true. Um, he's, he's the anonymity is better. Um, he's, he's, he's got little bars, little sticks going on there, cross 10. Yeah, big so, time, um, what well, uh, Brody Lee still has the title, he left with it. Uh, after the match. Moxley is calling out Bro- Mr. Brody Lee. He says he's going to break Ten's arm if Brody Lee doesn't show up and re- give him back his title. Brody Lee comes on the TV on the on the big screen and says that you know he's got to make sacrifices. So he he walks away with the rest of the Dark Order and the sacrifice. He's going to sacrifice Ten, get his arm broken by John Moxley, and John Moxley does just that, breaks Ten's arm. And um, I mean, it's you know, it's cool. It's just more of like build up, go yeah. home show, build up. Mr. Brody Lee versus uh, John Moxley for the AEW Championship. Now, this is what I want to focus on because um, at the end of the recap of our takeaways from AEW, we are going to give some predictions for Double or Nothing. Uh, but interesting thing. Now, how do you handle Brody Lee in this match? <sighs> well, the best way to do it for me, if I was booking this, would he has to lose, obviously. I, I don't think he's going to win the match. Mm-hmm. But... If he's gonna lose, he's like the the Dark Order to look, keep looking strong. Has to afterwards attack Mox and you know kind of make him pay for 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 winning. Like it can't be a full blown like just win and it's over because then they they lose. Brody Lee loses like his like you know strong feel and like loses you know just the top guy feel. So he needs to lose in a manner that's gonna make him look weak. And the fact that that like the Dark Order has to get their payback really quick there and just start maybe taking them out afterwards. That's the way I would book it. I don't think it's time for Mox to lose a belt yet. His yeah. run's been kind of – we're just waiting for it to get going right now. And for him to drop it this early would, would be just eh, – I don't know. Yeah, not, yeah the, not great. The timing of his run sucks for him because he won it and then all this uh, lockdown, you know, no no mass gathering things happen. So it's kind of hurt his title run a little bit. <laughs> yep. But what I would like them to do is have Brody dominate the match. Okay. Really, really dominate it. And then maybe he gets a little bit overzealous and a little bit overconfident. Here comes the fiery baby face, uh, you know, Moxley back and then takes the win. Like kind of, you know, doesn't steal it, but just has a late flurry because okay. dominated for the most part. So it makes Brody Lee can see he looks super strong. Yeah, which I obviously, strong. I obviously think they will make, keep him that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. But, but they're going to have Brody Lee like, you know, so yeah. uh, monstrous that, you know, you just don't want to like. 
and you don't want to kill a dark order like you just like they started off pretty slow for i mean we didn't like him coming yeah, in we until like we got there so you can't really kill them or they're just gonna lose and then Brody lee's weakened you gotta make it look strong and you gotta keep the, the dark order looking strong too so yeah they like even if they lose they have to dominate you know f- find a way to, to to make you know mox pay for it if, yeah. if he wins so that's that's how, how i would do it like you said just have Brody dominate Get overzealous, lose the match, and then here comes Dark Order to to kind of finish. Uh, yeah, he may get Fox. like overconfident stuff like that, and then he he leaves himself open for a little bit of yeah. a comeback, quick comeback, a spurt by uh, Moxley. Maybe he rolls him up and gets a win that way. Yeah. I wouldn't have him hit the paradigm shift and beat him like clean like that. I'd have him kind of just maybe like fire up, do a little bit of a comeback, and kind of just roll him up for a win or something like that. Um, yeah. Maybe a late reversal too of a move into like a cradle just, or something yeah, like that. Like, yeah, it's just we're, we're not. T- I mean, you could just give it to, to Brody, kind of back nah, and forth, but but, yeah. but 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 you don't want to do that. You just want to keep yeah. Mox strong. Maybe make this a, a like a two pay per view or or a longer storyline between them, like a, a bigger segment. Uh, we'll see what happens, but for for now, just keep a dark order strong and keep Brody Lee strong. That's the most important thing I, I think out of this. Okay. Yep. I think you're right. Yeah. Creep early strong is the most important thing coming out of this because it's another piece to play with for Moxley and yep. another run to go on. Uh, all right, guys. Next thing on the show was MJF against Marco Stunt. Mr. Fun Size. Mr. Fun Size Marco Stunt. Poor Marco Stunt was getting the ass beat all over the place. Obviously. Did a great job of it. You know, MJF dominated the entire match until a little bit of the end. There was a little spurt from a. a, a Marco Stunt. MJF Marco. wins the match. Then they have a confrontation with the Lucha Express. Uh, you know, uh, not Lucha Express. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> Jurassic uh, Express. Jurassic Express. Yeah, Jurassic Express. I, I, I was gonna say Dino Express. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jurassic Express. MJF and Wardlow. Obviously, uh, this Saturday is gonna be MJF versus Jungle Boy. So they just mm-hmm. keep fighting that up and hyping up, teasing uh, Luchasaurus and Wardlow should be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, next thing on the show and it's takeaway number two of the Wednesday Night Wars. It is Jake Roberts, Jake the Snake Roberts, and Arn Anderson. Uh, basically having a. a uh, a, a conference room style a meeting yeah. at, at like well, a big they long were six, table. They yeah, were like they six, were six eight, feet eight apart. Table. Yeah, yeah it's a super so long table for social two Social distancing table uh, yeah, that's promo that they were doing. That's definitely what it was, yeah, because this table was super yeah. long for like two people. It was ridiculous. For no reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's like in, um, in Tim Burton's Batman with Batman and uh, Vicky Vale are right, sitting <laughs> yeah. on the opposite side of the table. And he's like, <laughs> I, I've never been in this room. Yeah. <laughs> that's basically what <laughs> So, um, you know, so they have the, uh, the the back and forth. Now, both guys are, like, really good on the mic. Um, you know, Arn I mean, does get a ton of credit, uh, but he is really good on the mic as well. You know, I, I do like the little heat that uh, Jake Roberts gets from from kind of shitting on Brandy Rhodes, calling the her a bimbo. bimbo. You know, it's funny stuff like that. And then they, 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 they try to, like, they're, like, jockeying for, like, against each other. Like, oh, uh, you know, it, it, we never got a match against each other. And basically just they're, – they're, they're – poking and prodding each other to, to and but you know if nothing physical is going to happen because jake isn't in the position to really take a bump or do and anything like that neither is arn so yeah i mean arnold's spine buster motherfucker but you know other yeah, than that bro. he's not really gonna do much else so that that kind of hurts it they could have done this in the in a video package you know it, this wasn't the best but i just like seeing uh jake have promos i, I like hearing him and i like yeah. the stuff he says um, I like the way he carries himself i didn't like it at all i thought it was weird i thought it was awkward this is a go-home show for your net, your pay per view, and it's for the biggest, you know, like the new title, a new like, and you haven't really booked it where we've seen them face each other once, uh, between Cody and and Archer, and they're not, they're not even on the show, and they're the two guys in the in in like in the in the match, and you got their two managers kind of bickering at each other like two old men, uh, they were kind of all over the place. They had a forced Mike Tyson talk in there. It just it felt completely out of place. It just felt awkward. Felt like you know, I, I I did I got kind of like. Uh, Secondhand embarrassment watching it really. Um, I didn't enjoy it. I, I just thought it should have been Archer and Cody, maybe a little bit from the managers. But I mean, does Cody need Arn to talk for him? It doesn't. I mean, that doesn't really die for me. It, yeah. it hasn't been the it hasn't been the storyline till here, so it doesn't even really make any sense. With as personal as the storyline has been, yeah, like what? Archer, Archer taking out his brother, then then right. then them two doing something to his wife. It's so personal, yeah. To have these two guys just kind of sit it's there just, and yeah, it doesn't do it for me. And, and they've and we talked about it. I'm not talking about it again, but like they kind of like made this storyline just. They could have made it so much better, and they just kind of keep missing every week. Last week was fun. This week, come on, man, it's a go home show. We're supposed to get excited for this new title. Why aren't the two combatants in the ring talking shit? Why are the two old dudes yapping, you know, over each other? Just I ah, didn't like it. 
at all. Uh, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, it's a good point. You're making a good point. Yeah, because it is like, yeah, we, we've said it a lot about Cody and, and Larcher and how they've missed some things cinematically, yep. well, cinematic wise, that they could have really amped up the, the emotion behind all this. And this is, yeah, it, it, I, I didn't have that big of an issue with the segment. Like, it could have been done like with a video package. I, I like the, you know, I just, like I said, I, maybe I just like just hearing Jake ha- cut a promo. Um, yeah. And you and you could have had that like you didn't have to have a full um, just them two out there. You could have a little bit of of Jake talking, uh, maybe a little bit of of um, Arn and gone from there. But and then had those two guys face off. But this was just like we're we're the two combatants. We're the two guys that that are going for the new title. Just they weren't theirs. Yeah, this is like making the match about the two uh, yeah the two old guys coaches of, yeah. of the two two guys. And, like, so and then and Arn is only really there when when you know it's match time. It's not like Arn's really done any promos for it's not like he's like talking piece for cody cody can talk just fine all by himself so i just don't think it was necessary i think it was unless there was a reason why they could be in the ring together today uh, last night but i don't know yeah because cody yeah C- cody right now is the best baby face good guy promo in 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 wrestling so yeah, yeah he doesn't need it doesn't mean a mouthpiece yeah you're right it's a miss um they should have just they yeah i think they've done a lot of missteps in this we think they've done a lot of missteps in this whole cody archer build up um but let's see how if it pays off at uh, double or nothing uh, guys, the next thing on the show, we saw it was supposed to be it was supposed to, the match was supposed to be Ray Phoenix and Orange Cassidy. Well, real quick, Pac. We saw some, Pac yeah, I'm gonna promo. get to the Pac thing. Yeah, okay. so it was the match was gonna happen, but they put a Pac promo first. Okay. An, an interesting Pac promo. Yeah. I liked it. I thought it was pretty I cool. It was cool. Yeah, um, it was you know him, and then uh, it was like him dressed up, and then him in his wrestling clothes with a mask on. So it was, it was kind of weird. And then you know, just talking about how uh. Uh, about Orange Cassidy's beef with him and how the de- you can't escape death, you need the death triangle. Yeah. Um, so the match was cool between the Phoenix and uh, Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy pretty much tried the entire match. Um, but this all build up towards um, the big like money in the bank nine, ladder match, basically what they're doing. Tag, yeah. The, ni- the nine man ladder match they're doing for, um, uh, you know, to see who gets a shot at the AW Championship. Number one contender now, match. Um, you know, the match, you know, I thought it was a cool match. They, they started well. Uh, a lot of stuff going on here. Um, you know, Phoenix is the win. He's the cutter. He gets the win. And then everybody comes out and starts brawling. Kip Sabian is there. Kip Sabian kind of crosses the distraction and, you know, hits the cutter. Yeah. And uh, then but I, what I, the match was what it was. It's fine. It's setting up for that. But I want to talk about Phoenix's bump that he took at the end of the match. Oh, Everybody's yeah. outside the ring. He did like a springboard off the rope and then landed straight on his ass hard. I think he hurt himself. Hopefully he is able to go for Saturday. Yeah. But that's a super dangerous bump. I don't know why and, he did it. And, and Orange Cassidy had the worst hand I've ever seen. It was bad. Yeah, it was bad. It was a real bad one. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. So that's that. Uh, guys, the next thing on the show was a tag team match for the women. They got a lot of time. Nyla Rose and Britt Breaker versus Chris Statlander and Hikaru Shida. Um, Shida. The match is set for uh, both matches are set for double or nothing. It's going to be Statlander and Britt Breaker. It's also going to be uh, Shida and Nyla Rose for the, t- for the title. No disqualifications in that match. Um, <laughs> this is a good match. They keep giving these women time, and that's what they need to be doing to yep. really build the division as a whole. Uh, but that's cool. You know, um, uh, they, they had a table spot at the end after, after the win. Yep. You know, um, so uh, yeah, it's just what happened was that they, they set the table up. Nyla Rose set the table up after the uh, after. Uh, they got the win. Uh, Sheeta got the win. And after after that, she, Nyla Rose brought the table and do like a, a splash on the top rope. Um, Stratlander helps, you know, uh, distracts uh, Nyla Rose. Sheeta goes up, super, super plex off the top. Cool spot. Um, but that's pretty much it. So you know, both matches are set for double or nothing. Guys, next thing on the show, and it is the main event, and it's takeaway number three of AEW. <laughs> and the Wednesday Night Wars. It was a night of returns. A night of returns. Guys, we've seen you in a long time. Yeah, this match was Matt Hardy, Sammy Guevara. Obviously, there's beef because of the inner circle and elite, and also because Hardy was driving the golf cart that ran over uh, Sammy, Sammy Guevara. Literally attempted murder. Yeah. <laughs> now, they, interesting, they said that Sammy Guevara won the six out of his last seven matchups. So before we were talking about Sammy Guevara, was the fall guy for the inner circle. He was taking a lot of the falls when he would team yeah. up with Jericho. Everything like that, but he has gotten a bit of a run. This match different. Hardy would get the win. Now I gotta give the credit to Sammy Guevara the way he takes the twist of fate because he looks like he breaks his neck every single time. Every time. Every, every time. time. Like, literally, yeah. it looks like he just the man's crippled. Like he's a crippled man now. <laughs> yeah. Every time. Wonderful. <laughs> now, totally wonderful. What's interesting is that um, we got to hear Matt Hardy talk um, earlier in the show 
about the uh, the elite and the uh, the stampede match, stadium stampede match that they're gonna have. And yeah. he actually said that he actually came out with the the song, you know, that he's gonna cl- they're gonna classify themselves as obsolete, uh, that they'll fade away and classify themselves as obsolete. So we haven't heard that yet. So that's that's pretty cool to have that um, that he had it in there. Um, the match was cool, good match. Obviously, uh, Matt Hardy gets the win, but then it cuts to the Tron and. Chris Jericho. And they got Kenny tied up. Yeah, Chris Jericho and the inner circle have Kenny tied up on the goalpost on the stadium, uh, Jacksonville Jaguar Stadium. And he hits ball. Him, yeah, and then he hits him with a bat, and then Matt starts running over there, and then we see out of the out of the out of the stadium seat. Oh my god! <laughs> the return <laughs> of the Young Bucks, like Sting Bucks. style from like the high spot, yeah. like the ask God. Exactly. And yeah. Then here comes Satan Ortiz, of course, running him and then. Little yeah, cross body from from the top of the stands. Awesome little spot there. It was cool to see them back. That we haven't seen them in months. Uh, helped their boy Kenny, and then all hell and all in hell ensues. They just start a big old melee right there in the in the, in one of the end zones for for, for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Well, the end zone that says the elite on in the end yeah, zone, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Normally it would say like Jaguars or something like that, but it said the elite. Now they all start brawling, um, and Matt, you know Matt even comes in afterwards. Yeah, Matt, Matt, Matt Hardy shows up. He does show up. Uh, he finally makes his way over there. And then in the distance, we see somebody hauling ass on the entire football field. 100 yards. 100 yards <laughs> in cowboy boots. And it's the return of the one and only Hangman Adam Page. Woo! So, bad boy if I miss Hangman Page, man. Yeah. Now, uh, the elite is all back. Um, not to say they're all back together because Paige still seems to have some issues with the elite, but he's there in the fight against the inner circle. So the still problems still up them out. Yeah, still up them out. Adam Page clears house, um, and that was pretty much it. They set the two teams separate and just you know talk shit to each other at, at, at the end. But we found out that the match, the way it's going to work, the ring will be set up. 50 yard line of the stadium and it's falls kind of anywhere and they go wherever throughout the entire stadium. Um, so this is going to be super super interesting. I think it's going to be the last match. Now, I don't know how AEW is going to play it. They may play it like, oh, the title always goes on last, right? That's how they may play it. But it's an interesting match to have, like, in the middle of the show or at the yeah, end. Like, it's weird. Because it's, it, it's going to be a shit show. They're going to be probably all over the, the crowd, the stands. I mean, they're going to be all over the place running around. Yeah. They, they, they have an entire football scene to play with all, all by themselves. And, it's you know, it's, it, should, it should be fun. I'm excited for it. This, this is what you do when you can't have a full crowd and you got to – that's what WWE is doing. got to be creative. Like, yeah, you got to be, be creative. creative. And, like, they have a perfect – um, place where they have the stadium, they have the outdoor arena, so they just have a perfect complex there where they can make fun stuff happen. They can run around, do everything. I'm excited for it. I think that's the. I mean, the other matches are great and all, but this is the one I'm most most excited about. Um, you know, just to see the the elite versus inner circle. We finally get to see him. I wish Cody was in there, but Cody can't be in there, which is fine. But Hangman's back. That's my boy. So it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. Now, um, Hangman, like you said, he he's not really gelling with the elite because he kind of just walked so, away after yeah. he helped him but he's there for the fight now i hope what i hope is that this match doesn't cancel out the blood and guts match they're supposed to have i hope they don't do this in place of that now that match was supposed to have cody in it and and matt was supposed to replace uh nick jackson because yeah. nick jackson was having a child I, mean, I, so, I, I think this is the replacement to tell you the truth I, um, I kind of hope not. I kind of hope they this could be one, <clears throat> and then they do blood and guts eventually later on as like the final yeah. finish. Because for yeah, me, yes. the war games, blood and guts, you know, I think that has to be the one that finishes the feud. Um, and then I, I think they need Cody to be in it. Cody has to be in it. I mean, he has to be in it if 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 if, if they do do it. He's a Rhodes. It's kind of like I think uh, Dusty was a creator of that match. So yeah, so, so you, have, you yeah. have to have him in there. They do need but, Rose. Oh. Yeah, but I don't know. I think it's I think it's you can always come back to it later on. But I mean, this is a pretty big match, and to kind of keep it going for how long until who knows when we're gonna have people in crowds or when they want to do that. But I think this is fun. It's a great um, replacement match for 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 that. It might be even more fun. Who knows? They're gonna be running all over stadium again, and that was awesome last time. Yeah, I was, when other they- guys in there. It's going to be pretty cool. So there's probably golf carts. There's going to be cars running around. It should be a good time, but we'll definitely see what happens. Yeah. Now, guys, I'm going to pull up right now the card for AEW uh, Double or Nothing, and we're going to do our predictions for each match of Double or Nothing before we end on AEW move to NXT. Mm-hmm. Okay, guys. So <clears throat> during AEW Dynamite, Sean Spears had his – Odd little Sean Spears network news show was kind of weird. Um, and he challenged Dustin Rhodes. So that's the first match we're going to predict. 
Dustin well, Rhodes. The retired, the huh? The huh? supposed the supposedly retired uh, Dustin Rhodes. Yeah. So, so it's not true, obviously. So the match has been promoted and has been uh, set. Now, Dustin Rhodes versus Sean Spears. I think Sean Spears takes the win here. Has to win. He, he has, has to, to win. win. He has to win. Yeah. Dustin Rhodes doesn't gain anything from winning nope. or losing. He doesn't, I mean, he doesn't gain anything or does he lose it? He doesn't lose anything from losing. So uh, Sean Spears, I think we're in agreement, should win this match. Has to win the match. They, if they don't have no match, they completely screw Sean Spears. Makes no sense. Yes. Now, this match, next match is on the buy-in. So, it's like the pre-show. It's Private Party, who we haven't seen in a while, versus the mm-hmm. best friends, Chuck and Trent. I think best friends are going to win this match. Yep. I would think best friends, they've been on TV. The, the, the other tag team, uh, when they came in, they came with a bang. They beat the Young Bucks. You know, they got far into the tag team tournament. Uh, but they haven't been on TV for months and months and months. So, you got to keep the best friends hot. got to keep them rolling. They take the win. Yeah, and they take the win too. Uh, best friends also, they're having, they're going to start their feud eventually with Death Triangle, so they got to keep them at least somewhat strong. Here we got Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, versus Chris Open Statlander. Mm-hmm. Versus Chris Statlander. I think Britt Baker should win this match. Do you think she will win the match? What's yes. your prediction? I think she will win the match. Okay, um, I'm going to go with Statlander. I think they're going to push her a little bit. I, I don't think uh, Britt Baker needs to win. I think she's as good the way she is as a heel. Uh, they got to build that women's division. She's already the star of it. Let's have Stalin to win the match. You can always make it, you know, you know, not a complete domination or sort of something stupid, but you know, just have Stalin look strong and keep Britt Bert Baker strong, and it should be fun. Okay, so you match. say uh, Stalin, I say Britt Baker. That's the first one we disagreed on. Okay. Next one, a women's championship match, no disqualification, no countouts. Nyla Rose, the champion versus Hikaru Shida. I think Nyla Rose retains. I think Shida wins. I think Shida's been hot. She's been winning a lot of matches. She's been they've been keeping her strong. Um, I think that belt's going to hop around a little bit. There's a lot of girls I can kind of, you know, we'll see who, who can get strong, especially Britt Baker is kind of waiting for Britt um, to take it. But I'm going to go with Sheeta. She, she's been really, really hot. She's been putting up good matches. I, I think she's the one to take it. Okay. So I say Nala Rose. You say Sheeta. Okay. champion. Next thing, on, uh, next thing uh, casino ladder match, you know, basically money in the bank. Uh, it's for a future AEW World Championship match. Now, it, I don't know if it's a planned championship match or it's whenever they want to. So I think it's, uh, it's, I think it's gonna, gonna be a, this be a yeah, planned one. Yeah, well, planned. Yeah, one. I, I think they become number one contender automatically. So yeah. I, I, just, I doubt they'll just be yes. doing the same thing. Yeah. So we have Darby Allen, Colt Cabana, Orange Cassidy, Bay Phoenix, Scorpio Sky, Kip Sabian, Frankie Kazarian, Luchasaurus. That's gonna be one hell of a shit show. Nine guys. Yes. yes. <laughs> Uh, I'm going Darby. I think Darby's the guy to win this match. I think he's the best star in there. He's the most uh, – I don't think he's ready to be champion, but I think he can be a – like, of all those guys, they're kind of all in tag team, so they just it really, really make any sense for them to go and jump into a championship picture right now. I think Darby has been a good single star. He's had great matches. I think him, Mox, will have a great match, and if some way Brody Lee wins the, wins the match, you know, I think uh, – Darby versus Mox is a, could have some fun, crazy matches. Yeah. No, I think Darby sh- will win, but yeah. I also kind of have a feeling maybe Scorpio Skies. I think yeah. Scorpio Sky could eventually that be a star. That was my dark horse, yeah. Yeah, I think he eventually be, he'd be a star when he goes solo. But, yeah. Um, yeah, he's a dark horse guy that I can see winning, but I think most likely it will be Darby Allen that wins. Yeah, this. and uh, Scorpio, they, they had those vignettes those three weeks ago. Like, they had two or three weeks of uh, of I'm talking about him, yeah. So they, they've been talking him up. So, yeah, that's why he's kind of like a dark horse. But I think Darby's – at least like we said, Darby's probably going to win that one. Yeah. Uh, next thing, MJF with Wardlow versus Jungle Boy Jack Perry. I mm-hmm. think MJF wins this match. MJF he's like undefeated in 2020. Yeah. Uh, I think he's going to win this match. Yeah, I think no, he wins. No. Yeah. I think no doubt, MJF. All right, TNT Championship Tournament match. Uh, the final for the TNT Championship with Mike Tyson, Cody with Arn Anderson and Brandy Rose versus Lance Archer with Jake the Snake Roberts. I think Archer – is going to win, and I think he needs to win this match. I think Archer needs to win, but I think Cody's going to win. I think this I think, will hurt I think Archer if he loses this match. It depends how you book it, but I think if Tyson gets involved some way, now if Tyson does a little knockout or does something to, to Archer to uh, you know cost him the match a little bit, or then it's, it's more believable because you know mm-hmm. it's Mike. It's Mike Tyson. Yeah, yeah, it's Mike yeah. Tyson. But. I think Cody's gonna win it, man. I just think Cody, like, uh, he doesn't need it. He, he doesn't have to be champion ever, you know. But I just think Cody's gonna take the belt. I think to build some prestige to, to this title, it'll mean more. The belt will mean more on Cody than the belt will mean on on, on Archer, if, if that makes any sense. 
I get what you're saying, but I think they will make the right call and pick Lance Archer. I think we might see a heel turn by uh, Mike Tyson, and he will knock out Cody, and what? Lance Archer will win this match. I think that's what's going to happen. But no, those know. are predictions right there. All right, guys, next match, AEW World Championship match, champion John Moxley. Mox. John Moxley <laughs> versus Mr. Brody Lee. Formerly known as Luke Harper, uh, I think obviously oh, no Mox, Luke Harper crap. Yeah, I, I think Moxley will win this match. I think Mox wins as well. I think uh, we said we said earlier Mox needs to his title reign has kind of felt second or third place on anything going on in most of the shows, so he needs to get his proper run or get his proper comeuppance and be on top. It's the belt he needs to be number one, and I think after this tournament thing is done, they'll start properly placing things in, in the right order. So I don't think. Mox should drop the belt to, to Broly yet. Just yet. Yes, you, I think I think he needs to win too. This, if you book this right, you can make this a, a long, long storyline, maybe a month or two of them going back and forth, if you book it right. Yeah, I think Moxie will win as well. Uh, next match, last match, Stadium Stampede match. The Elite, mm-hmm. Matt Hardy, Adam Page, Kenny Omega, Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson versus The Inner Circle, Chris Jericho, Jake Hager, Sammy Guevara, Santana, and Ortiz. I think The Inner Circle win. I think Inner Circle wins too. I think they're, they're, they're the hottest thing on, like they're the they number are. one thing on AEW. There's no reason to have them lose or anything. Just you can keep cheating. You can keep doing some crazy stuff. You can get a new member. I don't know. Has anybody been signed lately? Who knows? You can bring somebody out, cheat, do what you got to do, and they and the elite are going to look strong no matter what. And Inner Circle is going to keep being the most entertaining thing on AEW. That's it. Yeah, I think yeah. The Inner Circle, the Inner Circle is just way too entertaining. Now, if I think they should win this match. And then eventually do blood and guts, and the elite wins blood and guts. I think we'll that's the way we'll that should work. But Hold the inner circle, I think, yeah, I think will win. I think should win this match. They're the most entertaining. They're the biggest draw on the show, yeah. and um, they're just too good and too fun to have them lose this match. Because if it is a blow off, I would rather see the inner circle kind of win the blow off. But uh, yeah, but remember uh, this uh, pay per view Saturday, double or nothing. We'll drop a video for that Saturday night. And remember, Alex Marvis, shut your ass. Now. <laughs> Let's get into NXT and our NXT, four takeaways from NXT. NXT, NXT. All right, guys. So NXT started hot because it had the crazy entrance of Karrion Cross with the lovely Scarlett Bordeaux or just mm. Scarlett, whatever her name is. Mm. Um, so uh, mm. they're going to say right now, most beautiful women in professional wrestling, Scarlett. Oh, without a doubt. So they have their crazy entrance, and he is taking on somebody mm. named... Yes, it doesn't because he was an enhancement talent, a Jobert, a Jobber, whatever you guys want to call him. So obviously, Killer Cross, Karrion Cross, sorry, destroyed him, destroyed him. And then this is going to be takeaway number four of the Wednesday Night Wars, and it is Chamaso Champa. Remember, Cross made his, you know, kind of. sort of debut when he beat the shit out of attack champa and why champa was cutting like a kind of like on the phone selfie promo in the back yeah. and you barely saw some of uh carrying cross's face in there uh, but obviously he's the one that attacked them now we haven't seen champa since then and now cross is actually on tv showed up twice already here comes champa to lay down the challenge and you know basically call him out now um i i really enjoy everything champa does now these yeah, two guys right. next to each other like some crazy sons of bitches because mm-hmm. they both have those kind of faces that little like real fucking crazy like, like they're both super psycho like super they're not extra like loomis creepy but they're just like psycho yeah yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. they're like loose cannons both of them yeah they, get, they got that pillman effect they got the pillman effect yeah yeah where you don't know really what they're gonna do yeah yeah um, what's next yeah so he lays down the challenge for takeover in your house um that is in two weeks, June seventh. Um, June seventh. So we'll be able to see that, and that's the match that's going to take place. Super excited for this match. Super excited to see them finally go face to face. And I think it's it, it, and you know, Chapa said it best himself. He said to um, Karrion Cross, "Welcome to the main event," because he went after the top dog in a, in uh, NXT. Even though he's not the one with the title, I think he is the top number one guy in Without NXT. Question. With, I mean, Gargano has that claim too as well, but yeah, um, definitely Chapa. Uh, I think it was great. Uh, Scarlett Bordeaux looks great. Um, Scarlett looks great. So I'm excited just to have to see her around. And mm-hmm. that's all I got to say about that because Scarlett's around. So fine. Good. Yeah. But guys, that is takeaway number four. Champa, Cross, in your house. 
take over June seventh. Scarlet, don't forget. And Scarlet will be there as well. I'm gonna be super excited to see that entire uh, thing go down. And I, I really hope, and I really, I really hope it's a kind of like a real physical savage match. Um, because Cross just has like that savage look to him. So hopefully, you know, let's let's see what happens. Hopefully, they work it well, and uh, the feud will continue from there on. Uh, really. Uh, jumpstart cross and really put them in the main event like top top of the card immediately as soon as from the start um all right guys so the next thing on the show interim cruiserweight tournament akira tozawa versus el hijo del fantasma, hijo del fantasma. Que pasó now, aquí? these are the only two guys in group b who are still able to make it to the final okay Fantasma gets the win. He th therefore eliminates Tozawa, and he is coming out of Group B, uh, going going to the final of the Cruiserweight Tournament, uh, and he will face somebody else from Group A. We'll see later on uh, more or less what's going to happen with that. Now, the funny thing I always want to bring up, afterwards, they're in the parking lot, Tozawa and Fantasma. Tozawa's kind of like, you know, congratulating him and all stuff. They were friendly, real, like, you know, um, lot, you know. So he gets in, uh, Fantasma gets in his car. Tozawa was kind of just staring there, looking at him. Here come the, that, those, I guess those cartel members that wore mm -hmm. luchador masks. They came out of the Suburban that they're always driving. They attacked Tozawa, but in a way that Fantasma couldn't open his door because they were he was like, oh, Tozawa shit. against. So yeah. he had to get out of the passenger side. And as soon as they saw that, them cartel luchador guys got scared. They were like, now, holy shit, let's get the there, fuck out of here. There's two of them. They already knocked out Tozawa, so he, he's not a threat anymore. Come on, cartel guy. Just take off Fantasma, put, put him in the thing, and, and abduct him, take him back to Mexico to the cartel leader and get it done. Who's driving that damn that damn suburban? Who's yeah. the mystery driver? I don't know. They've abducted two guys and they've been trying to do uh abduct uh Phantasma for a while. Now they took for out Tozawa. I really want to see where this goes because I find this to be a hilarious storyline. Um it's it's hysterical. Like, hey Trips, get some security out in the parking lot. Like anybody yeah. anytime, anytime you're in the parking lot of that place, it's completely the most dangerous thing on earth. You're yeah, you get abducted left and right. It's yeah. Crazy. Guys, next thing on the show was a Shotzi Blackheart uh video what? package. She, she, real was, she, she was calling out the entire women's division and she was on a real fucking tank. Now you guys know we love Shotzi Blackheart and her small little funny little tank she comes out in. We were mad for a while because she wasn't using it, but she brought it back and now she has a real tank in this video. So she better continue to use the small tank from here on out. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and no. she called out the whole women's division. This led into the match of Mia Yim versus is uh, the lovely Santana Garrett. Santana Garrett, Garrett. So um, this was a squash and a half. This thing was done in like 30 seconds. Yim yep. gets the win. Um, but then what happens is that uh, Johnny Gargano, Candice LeRae come out and they call and they start talking shit to uh, Mia Yim. Yim. They get in the ring, but here comes the um, the limitless Keith Lee to help Mia Yim out. So How's the song go? How's the song go? Oh, bask in his glory. <laughs> and like that. That's a song. So, um, yeah, he helps him out. So obviously we see that's gonna happen. Mixed tag right there. Mia Yim, Keith Lee, Gargano, Candice Lorray. I'm assuming take over in your house. Yeah. That match will happen. Should but those are fun. the things going on. Yeah, it should be fun. Yeah. yeah, guys. Next thing on the show, and this is the next takeaway number five. It is Roderick Strong versus my boy, my main man. Dexter Loomis, your resident molester, your resident creep, your resident pervert. Now, this man entrance. Yeah, we don't know if he's a pervert, Dan. We don't know that. We don't know if he's a pervert. I'm going to say he's a pervert, or he leaves. <laughs> not that he's an actual pervert, but he's, he's playing one on TV on NXT. <laughs> uh, but I'm a huge fan of Dexter Loomis. I love the way he gets in the ring because he slides mm -hmm. in and then I just kind of crawls his way but like only uses his hands and goes like all the way to the other side of the ring and sticks his head through i thought it's that creepy. Shit was, it's creepy it's it is creepy, creepy. but um you know loomis is he's pretty good in the ring um he's yeah. obviously working with one of the best guys there is in the ring and roger strong real dean malenko type of guy um mm -hmm. you know but uh roger strong would get the win here um he steals it, basically rolls him up, rolls uh, you know, uh, Loomis up and gets the win. But the what I want to talk about is what happens after here, uh, because Roger Strong is celebrating. <laughs> now Dexter Loomis goes to choke him, uh, Roger Strong out while he's on the outside of the ring. But Loomis, the way he gets from the inside of the ring to the out is the funniest part because he does that creepy crawl. <laughs> like that all, crawl. And he does it really fast. So he crawls all the way through. That's and a sadistic hooks, psycho walk. And then hooks crawl. Strong up in the submission. And, and now and he just has lights lost. He's just like in a yeah, in a whole, trance. Whole like he's, thing. So he's sitting on the floor on the outside, holding him in the choke, holding Roger Strong in the choke. Here comes Adam Cole, Bobby Fish. They start wailing on uh, Loomis, and he is not letting go. He's not. He's not selling any. He's taking kicks. kicks to the face. He's just, he's just in his zone. Like that dark hair that he has on him. That that is just like in full control. In full control. Yeah. Now what happens next is that this odd friendship between Dexter Loomis and now. 
Velveteen Dream, who's going to come out and help uh, Dexter Loomis fight off Cole Bobby Fish. Um, mm-hmm. this is a, now, he's repaying the favor, obviously, because Dexter Loomis has helped him multiple times. Dexter Loomis came in during that tag match where uh, Keith Lee got taken out, and then he helped him in the championship match, even though Dream ended up losing that match. He still helped him in that match to fight off uh, the rest of the Undisputed Era. So Dream comes in. He starts, um, you know, he takes out Bobby Fish. He takes out uh, Adam Cole over the barricade. So then he proceeds to go up to the top rope, Dream, and then jumps off. Now, this is where the editing of a pre tape show kind of comes into play because you see Dream go for the frog splash, but when he lands, it's a different it's camera an angle and it's yeah, an it's elbow. elbow. So yeah. they kind of messed up on that. It's kind of odd to see WWE make a mistake like that, but they made that mistake. Yeah. Now, yep, continuity mistake. Then you see the celebration of Dream, and then you'll see Dexter Loomis still sitting there with Roger Strong, but he's petting him like he's petting yeah. his head. And he continues to pet his head, and he pets his head like it was a dog. Hilarious it's stuff. It's a creep. It's a creep. Yeah, it's love creep. it. Love it. Now, guys, <laughs> nice thing on the show. Very quick match. Danny Birch, Oni Lorcan versus the team of Everrise, who we've seen yeah, multiple that, times. Like, this was a filler if I've ever seen a filler. Yeah, Birch and Lorcan get the win. That's all there is to say about that. Yep. Um, Next thing is going to be takeaway number six, and it is the interim cruiserweight tournament match of Kushida versus Drake Maverick. Very, very fun match. Uh, enjoyed it a lot. Now, Kushida, 2-0. Um, Drake Maverick, 1-1. One and one. and then you have Jake Atlas, who's 2-1, and one, right? So, interesting, because they're all in the same group. If Drake Maverick miraculously wins this match all three men are tied and that exactly is exactly what happens he rolls them up sneaks off the win drake maverick wins the match now what ensues is a face down and they say there's gonna be a triple threat match um to see who faces hijo del fantasma who's the group b winner in the championship final if he doesn't get abducted between now and then so Nah, no, I doubt no. it. Those guys are fucking scared of him. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to see the triple threat, Jake Atlas, Kushida, Maverick, uh, Drake Maverick in there. I think Kushida will come out on top. Unless yeah, they go with like a surprise and have Jake Atlas win, but I don't, I'm not a huge fan of Jake Atlas. No, I think, I think if I see Drake, I think Drake has a better chance of winning than Jake Atlas does. I think it's either Drake or Kushida. You can go either way. With yeah, either him. way, yeah. either way, either way. But, but if you, you can't go Atlas, you build Atlas enough. Again, we're not a big fans of him, but uh, he's a young guy. You're trying to build him up. He's maxed out. He's on a triple third match with these two guys. I think that's where he's maxing out right now. Yeah. Let's not make him the final because he almost doesn't really care. Uh, I think Fantasma versus Kushida is a great idea. Yeah, no, I think so too. Um, Kushida legitimately is one of the top wrestlers in the planet. Um, yeah. Tremendous, tremendous in-ring talent. Um, and, you know, Maverick, you never know. Maybe he did sign a deal with WWE and that, they're just playing it like this. Is. It has to, right? Because why draw it out this long, right? Because if you're not going to have him win or go to the yeah. final, like... It just, the, it's a know. great story. It's just like it was like a natural thing they weren't expecting. And uh, it was his real emotion in front of, a, of, of his phone or whatever, his, his Zoom call and... I mean, sometimes stuff like that just works out. People felt sorry for him, felt bad, and now he's making a good story out of it. It's a good little run. I mean, I mean yeah. hey, if he wins the damn thing, I mean, that's a pretty awesome story. Like, that's pretty cool. That. Yeah, people would people be really interested in him winning. I don't think people would be as interested in Kushida winning or, or Hill Fantasma. Fantasma just because it is the it still have the stigma of being the Cruiserweight title and being less yeah. than everything else on yep. the brand and in the company whatsoever. So I think Maverick might be the best bet to win this because it will have a lot of uh, – other like implications towards it like you know him yeah, coming and back, it adds this this meaningful story and you can keep adding to it that hey this kid was you know fired basically he was let go during a pandemic and you know he, he got that one chance and he made it yeah. to it and you keep carrying that for as long as you can carry it and then you know you got an interesting storyline from a cruiserweight belt that no one really gives a crap for the last three years about so yeah, exactly. I think it would be a good idea to have Maverick win, but we'll see what happens when the triple, play, the triple threat match does take place. Um, should be pretty exciting. I'm assuming it might play, take place next week. I think the championship match will be at TakeOver yeah, in your yeah. house, I yep. think. Um, but we'll get more info on that. Uh, next thing on the show, um, well, let's <laughs> talk about really quick. Uh, Matt Riddle, Timothy Thatcher, obviously they broke up last week. They uh, pretty much challenged each other. He, uh, Timothy Thatcher challenged... Um, Matt Riddle to a match anytime, any place, only submissions yep. or knockout or submissions. So he, he called him out to a cage match. I'm not sure if it's going to be like an octagon set or a lion's den type cage or it's going to be a regular cage, but we'll see that most likely at um, TakeOver. Uh, so it'll be pretty interesting. Um, also, before the main event, Damian Priest issued a challenge to Finn Balor for NXT TakeOver in your house. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, obviously, like Finn. Obviously, Priest is, the, Priest is the one that attacked him, you know, a few weeks ago. All right, so let's get into the main event. It's going to be the final takeaway. Takeaway number six seven of the night and it is the match between Rhea Ripley, Io Shirai. Um, you know, the match 
ends in the disqualification, and this is the takeaway, is that uh, Charlotte Flair interrupts, and she's the one that takes out um, uh, Shirai. So Shirai wins by disqualification, you know, as a fact of she her being attacked by Charlotte. Now, this is all setting up for a triple threat match that will obviously take place at TakeOver. Um, but it's interesting how they – now, Charlotte's on all three shows, and she's beating everybody she faces. Yeah. So I'm not sure how they're going to work it when it goes to the next TakeOver. Uh, I mean, I think you're going to continue that. Just keep whooping everyone's ass. I mean, I don't see – if she's going to be NXT, she has to be champion. That's just the whole... Yeah. You know, just has You're right to about that. That's a good point. That's a good point. So, yeah. I mean, just, I, unless what they do is they, is, is, is they have Rhea Ripley beat her, and then... But it wouldn't make any sense. What's the point of being her at WrestleMania, you know, being Rhea Ripley, and then uh, a month and a half later, you just drop it again. Doesn't... I don't know. Doesn't really yeah. do anything. Now, you her being, well uh, her her being, at, her being at NXT, I don't know what it does for the rest of the women that are, like, lower on the card and they making their way up. I think she can make a few people, though. Like, yeah, she that's the thing. Like, like, couple, she makes a star. Yeah, she, if she keeps it and if she and keeps, then, continues to take on, like, the smaller names I, in NXT. I also think that we need to get away from the how it was, where, where it was, like, these – NXT was viewed as the minor league, right, of there to be where you're trying to get to, to the two top brands. Oh, yeah, that's why you put Charlotte there, yeah. Yes, I think NXT now with Finn and and, um, and Charlotte, they're a, a legit third brand. And it's just going to be like, you guys are, you're not going on different shows. Maybe they'll put them on different shows here and there, but this is a, a, a big brand, and they got to make stars, and they got to make stars by having stars make these stars. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. having Charlotte in there and having great matches with, with all these different types of of younger girls coming in and out. I mean, I think it's a great way to, to bring yeah, the, and then they, it, the they, new crew they of girls. Sh- they should do that. Start treating guys like when they're not using guys, send them on the NXT. And then that's, that's like another show. It's an equal brand. So like a guy like yeah, Cesaro, at this point, it's equal brand. Nakamura, send those guys back to the NXT. That's where they want to be at. That's where they'll flourish. That's where they'll be appreciated. I would even send, yeah. I would even fuck around and send like guys, Sammy Zayn back there. Um, I could yeah. even send Kevin Owens back there. Cause it doesn't seem like they really have a concrete plan of what they want to do. With Kevin Owens too. But NXT is a spot where it's a legitimate third brand. It's the hottest brand of the three brands. And um, there should be no problem sending yeah. guys down there yet. But, Guys, that's the video. The seven Thank takeaways you. from the Wednesday Night Wars, AEW versus NXT. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, make sure you check out that Dark Side of the Ring that dropped. Uh, the uh, Owen Hart death, uh, you know, documentary. Uh, almost cried. Watch that. You got um, Friday Night SmackDown coming uh, tomorrow. Then we have Double or Nothing. And then uh, Sunday, make sure you watch part three of The Undertaker Last Ride. Uh, guys, but that's the video. Remember, if it doesn't work, you both do not do the job. <laughs>